Welcome to the audio laboratory. You might have noticed that people can have some pretty strong feelings about their digital audio workstation. We are no exception. Our DAW of choice is Reaper. We've been using it to produce every single one of our videos, on our own channel, as well as here on Toman Studio and Recording. So, let's take a look at five of our favorite Reaper features. One thing we like about Reaper is its flexibility. For example, there are no track types. Every track is universal and can contain everything from mono, stereo and multi-channel audio to MIDI and even video files. You can mix and match as you please. The topmost video object is displayed in the video window. And while you can actually use Reaper for basic video editing, we just bring in the final video as a single file to work on the soundtrack. And the routing in Reaper is very flexible too, in the sense that it doesn't distinguish between regular tracks, buses and auxiliary aux or return tracks. Any track can send and receive signals. Take a look at our episode on buses and send effects for more info on that. And not only can you have effects and automation per track, but also per item, but more on that in a minute. It really feels like there are no arbitrary restrictions, but as always, with great power comes great responsibility. I have to admit that I have accidentally sent audio and MIDI to a plugin once or twice, wondering why it doesn't behave as expected. Reaper is very customizable, sometimes overwhelmingly so. And I'm not just talking about the toolbars or the endless list of commands that can be assigned to keyboard shortcuts or even your MIDI controller. Some useful features are a bit hidden and have to be configured properly. While the default settings are perfectly fine for most users, here are a few changes we always make after a fresh install. Check out the comments, we'll post detailed instructions on how you can change each setting. The first one is hand scroll. From many graphics editors, we're used to an easy method of scrolling without having to use those clumsy scroll bars. So we assigned hand scroll to the middle mouse button. Just press and hold the mouse wheel down and you can comfortably scroll around the timeline. Horizontally or vertically. Next, let's take a look at the media items. By default, you can drag this line down from the top of each item, which will lower its volume. But we found it more useful to have a volume knob instead, which can increase the item volume as well. And it keeps the waveform a little less cluttered. You can also add some handy buttons to the media items. With these, you can mute single items, add effects to single items, and you can even create automation curves inside of single items. That's awesome for some quick plosive reduction, breath reduction, or de essing. And finally, we can change the behavior of the MIDI editor. By default, a left click moves the playhead, and a double click places a note. That's a bit annoying because when the sequence is running, placing a note will also make the playback jump. We changed this so the playhead doesn't move when placing a note, and we place notes with a single mouse click instead of a double click. Saves us 50% of clicks and a lot of nerves. How do you customize a clean install of Reaper? Let us know in the comments. New Reaper releases are very frequent, but the developers don't just squash bugs. They actually keep adding lots of useful stuff, even in between major versions. Some of the more recent feature updates were focused on loudness management. Reaper now has a brick wall limiter and a loudness meter. And when rendering, Reaper automatically gives you integrated loudness measurements. Very convenient, this saves us an extra step on every export. And now you can normalize items not only for peak level, but for loudness. When using a reference track, we can now easily normalize it to whatever target loudness we're shooting for. For example, minus 14 LUFS for YouTube or Spotify. By the way, reference tracks are super easy to create in Reaper. Just disable the track's master send and instead send it directly to the hardware outputs. This way, the reference track isn't affected by any plugins on the master out. Just keep it muted and solo whenever you need it. Imagine you're editing lots of samples, sound effects, loops, one-shots, whatever. With Reaper, you can create a region for each sound. And also name these regions. 
They can be used when rendering or exporting. You can tell Reaper to export every region to a separate file. And thanks to the file name Wildcards, you can insert the region name directly into the file name. Isn't that awesome? One click is enough to start rendering and naming every file. And what's even better, you can include folders in the region names. If you do so, your rendered sounds will automatically land in subfolders. Extremely useful if you're building a sound library. And if you later change your mind and decide on a different processing, one click is enough to update all of the files. And look at that, you even get a loudness report for every file. Lovely. If you're missing a specific feature in Reaper, there's a good chance that somebody already programmed a script that will do the trick. Most of them can be conveniently downloaded and installed via a package manager called Repack. You can get it at repack.com. Check the user guide for installation instructions. Here are three scripts we use very often. A color picker for tracks and items. This one selects every item on the timeline that belongs to the same source file. And this one moves the playhead frame by frame, so we can accurately place our sound effects. And if you still haven't found what you're looking for, you can program your own scripts, like I did with this super quick custom volume dip. But more on that in an upcoming episode about dialogue editing. We hope our little tour gave you an idea why we love Reaper so much. We find it a joy to use and it makes our life easier. And honestly, I don't know any other software that's that powerful, yet well programmed and efficient. I mean, the download is only 14 megabytes, and the only time it ever crashed on me was due to a faulty plugin. That's it for this flashcard. Don't hesitate to leave a comment, and if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe and ring the bell. <laughs>